Hey there, this is Eric Andreas, also known as Your Guitar Sage, for part three of a four-part series of the four most important techniques that any guitar player needs to know in order to play a lot of songs, okay? So, this is part three. We've talked about, so hopefully you've seen part one and part two. The first part was talking about right-hand technique. Uh, the second part of the series was strumming technique. Today we're going to be talking about uh, fretting hand technique, which is, uh, for many of you, the left hand. Uh, for, for lefties, it would be your right hand. But we're going to be talking about real specific technique here that uh, a lot of guitar teachers don't talk about. And unfortunately, a lot of guitar players, a lot of learning guitar players, don't know to ask the question. Um, and it takes a guitar teacher who understands where they came from and how they learned and then being able to apply that to their students, okay? Um, and I like to break this stuff down for my students so that they can understand each little step that it takes and to use focus in order to get to these great techniques and to become masters at them. Now this technique that we're going to be learning, at, learning today is important for beginners, intermediate, and advanced players all the world around, doesn't matter what genre of music you're interested in, this style of playing is quintessential and a lot of students aren't taught it, okay? So, if you keep a couple of these things in mind, you're going to be in good shape for any style of guitar that you're playing and it's going to make your learning experience a lot more fun, okay? So, let's check this out. So, when we're fretting the guitar, there's a couple things that we need to develop in our technique, okay? Our hand is not used to picking up things like this, okay? We don't pick things up with our third and fourth finger. We pick them up with our first and second finger, okay? Also, typically, we don't grab them like this unless we're drinking tea or something like that. We typically palm things, okay? We palm them because we don't want things to drop. We're grabbing a glass or a jar or a shovel or something like that, we're going to palm it, meaning it goes into the palm of our hand, into the web of our hand. And that means we won't drop that item as opposed to holding things like this in our fingertips. Okay? This is where the big problem comes in when we're talking about playing guitars because a lot of people try to do this approach and they disregard fingers three and four, so they grab the neck like this. You know, This is fine for grabbing a shovel, but not so good for grabbing a guitar and playing really delicate melodies and chords and that sort of thing. So we have to rethink the way we approach the guitar, okay? Is it uncomfortable, this technique that I'm going to show you? Not uncomfortable in, in painful per se, but it is slightly uncomfortable in that you're learning a new technique, but this is the proper way to play guitar. And if you understand this from the very get-go, you're going to save yourself a ton of time. A ton of time, okay? There's, I've seen guitar players that have been playing for years that are using poor technique and um, are doing pretty good, but if they had done the right technique from the beginning, they wouldn't have painted themselves in a corner and they would not have developed the bad technique. So this is going to fix that for you, uh, whether you're new um, or a guitar player who's been playing for a long time. Okay, so here we go. The most important few things that you want to do here is when you're playing, at least in the beginning, taking your thumb and dropping it behind the neck, okay? What this is going to do is it's going to allow some room here between the guitar neck and the palm of your hand. If I wanted to say, if I wanted to play, say, a, a C chord, I might bring my thumb up here, but that's because I've been playing for a long time and I can kind of get away with cheating this technique a little bit, but in the beginning you just cannot. So, the proper way would be for me to drop my thumb like this and allow my hand to be able to come out in front of the guitar more. A lot of guitar teachers will tell you to drop your shoulder, get your hand out front, all these techniques that are fairly uncomfortable. But, if you drop your thumb and curl these last knuckles, that's about all the information that you really truly need to play good solid chords, bar chords, melodies, and everything without clunking all over the guitar neck, okay? So, um, this first technique, dropping that thumb, is going to allow your knuckles to curl. Notice if I'm like this, if I've got my thumb up here, these knuckles are totally flat, okay? Why is that bad? 
Well, if I go to play a C chord, I've got fingers laying all over strings that should be sounding out, okay? Because I've got these flat knuckles. So in order to keep those knuckles from being flat, we drop our thumb. And then we can't have all this hand down here. We want to curl that last knuckle. So the first thing is dropping the thumb. And the second thing is keeping this top knuckle, okay? So what I mean by the top knuckle is this guy right here. Keeping that as curled as possible. Now you don't have to do this all the time, but when you need the technique, you want to make sure that it's there. You want to make sure that you're able to do this. So curling that top knuckle allows all the notes to sound in your chord. Now notice, watch my hand here for a minute. That's with that nice curled knuckle. Now watch this, I'm just going to barely flatten my fingers out. And now I'm going to play the same chord. Notice I still get the idea of the chord, but there's several notes that are not playing. Some of them are somewhat playing. Not a very full sounding chord as opposed to, okay? So in the difference there is the only thing I did there is I really created an angle here on that top knuckle. That's what's going to save you. And the reason being is when you're playing like this, the, uh, the strings that are beneath the finger, any finger that's playing, is touching the pad of your finger. Okay, so for instance, this third finger is on the third fret of the fifth string, and I'm going to pick that note. Now, if that pad is touching the fourth string right underneath it, then if I pick it, it's going to be muted. But if I curl that knuckle, now I can hear the string play. If it's not curled, I get that muffled sound. So curling that last knuckle is extremely important in addition to dropping that thumb. And it creates great sounding chords, okay? So for any technique that you're doing, whether you're playing a chord, if you're on to chords already, then you'll want to think about this technique. If you're playing an exercise, um, like for instance here uh, on YouTube, I've got an exercise called Dexterity Exercise Number One. and it goes like this. The first exercise that every guitar player should learn. And so, having using this technique where we have that curled knuckle and that thumb drop is going to be the best technique. The more you do this, the more comfortable it is, okay? It's just like doing something you're not used to. For instance, if you're used to brushing your teeth with your right hand and you try doing it with your left hand, try this, it will feel very strange because only because you're not used to it. If you were to say for a month, start brushing with your left hand, that left hand is going to start feeling just as natural brushing your teeth as your right hand will. And eventually, if you did it all the time, the left hand would feel more comfortable than the right hand, whether you're right or left handed. It's a learned thing and it's a habit thing. So in the same way with playing guitar, if you practice these techniques over and over again with focus, then this will become very natural and your chords will sound great. You won't have to think about curling your knuckle, dropping your thumb and that sort of thing. This conscious way of thinking will get into your subconscious and you'll be able to just play very easily. Okay. Okay. Hopefully you dig this. If you do hit thumbs up, hit subscribe, all that good stuff. Um, I have a ton more free videos for you. This is part three of a four part series. Getting started, PlayingGuitar.com has 25 additional free lectures. It's over two hours of free content for you. Would love for you to take advantage of that, so make sure you go and check that out. If you haven't checked out part one and two of this series, then do that. Links are below. And make sure that you check out part four of this next series. Um, and also, at GettingStartedPlayingGuitar.com, not only is there that great 25 lecture series, but there's also advanced series in there as well and intermediate. So make sure you check those out as well. I'm Eric Andreas, your guitar sage. See you in number four.